Hi everyone! Today's recipe that we're testing out is going to be a carrot soup. So you're going to need, first off, lots and lots of carrots. Two and a half pounds according to the website. You're also going to need two onions. A couple of ribs of celery. One potato. And some chicken broth. Now, instead of broth, I actually use this little jar, which is called Better Than Bouillon. Uh, it's much more conveniently sized, and you just have to mix it with water when you're ready to use it. And you're probably also going to want some milk or almond milk or else some extra broth, because at the end it's really thick. I also suggest, if you have access to it, a bread bowl. Another time I'll have to show you my favorite bread bowl recipe, but for now I'm using one that I got from Panera. Now as for equipment, you're going to need a knife and a cutting board, a large cooking pot with a lid, something to stir with, a measuring cup for the chicken broth, a ladle to serve with, and then either a blender or a potato masher or a food processor, or if you're doing it the way I'm doing it, a bowl that's smaller on the bottom than your big cooking pan, because I'm using an immersion blender. This is one of my favorite Christmas gifts. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is chop up the onions pretty small, and then we're going to cook them until they caramelize, which is going to take 40, 50, 60 minutes. The recipe says it's going to be quite a while, so I figured I'm going to start this and I'm going to get some work done, and then when it's been about half an hour, I'll come back and chop up the other vegetables so they'll be ready to go in. Here's a kitchen safety tip. When you cut something rounded like an onion, the knife can slide off. And if you're cutting the side that curves away from your hand, that's not such a big deal. But if you're cutting the side that curves towards your hand and you want to keep your fingers, it is a big deal. So when you're slicing on that side, slow down, take a second to rock or saw the knife back and forth until it's gone down at least a couple layers worth of the onion because the top layer will slide right off with the knife. Once it's gotten in a little bit, then you can apply the usual force you do to cut. That way you keep your fingers and you get your onion chopped. One of those ingredients that, for that I forget to mention because I assume it is oil. All right, the sizzling's begun. Now we're just going to stir these a bit every so often. So this is what you get if you don't pay attention to the onions and don't turn the heat down low enough. <laughs> Very low. Ready to chop the vegetables? So we're chopping up uh, two or three ribs of celery. Then you peel the potato and cut it up as well. Keep in mind what I told you with the onion and be careful as you're cutting that you don't end up cutting yourself. All right. Then you're going to wash and peel that whole big old load of carrots. That's going to take a while, but you'll get there, trust me, and it's worth it. Chop off the ends of the carrots and then cut them into coins, mm, thicker than actual coins. The idea is you want all the vegetables to be about the same thickness so that they cook at about the same rate. Then we're ready to put it in the pot. She says stir it well to coat everything with the onions and then give it 10 minutes to cook like this. So. The recipe calls for two cups of broth, so here I have my two cups of water. This stuff's great. Don't have to keep big containers of it around. So it says a teaspoon per cup. Let me put in two cups, and I'm just using a regular small spoon to guesstimate. 
rather than trying to get a measuring spoon out and get it all out. It's probably a little more than a teaspoon, but it's good stuff. Oh yeah, that's boiling. I'm gonna turn it back down a bit. I'm gonna get them soft in my sheet. Don't know if you can tell, but it's a lot mushier now. Let's see. Yep, that cuts pretty easily once you get leverage on it. Yep. Next thing to do is pour the soup, the finished vegetables, into a smaller container that's a little deeper so that it's easy to blend if you're using an immersion blender like I am. The funny thing is, pretty much all the liquid has cooked away. So I've got out some plain almond milk. I'm going to be putting some of that in there uh, just to thin it out a little bit so it'll mix. And it's time to plug in the immersion blender. like it's pretty much ready to go this time. I'm going to make it a little thinner so it'll last longer. And then just a little more stirring. But I almost forgot salt and pepper to taste, so let's put those in and see how it is. good. Now for the last step, cutting out the bread bowl. That's pretty good. Lots of room for soup, but still plenty of bread in the sides here to eat. This I can keep for another time. Probably for some of the leftovers if I want to take them to work. 